Today I'm going to show you guys everything that you need to know when it comes to sampling. As you know, there are a lot of ways you can go about sampling and in today's video, I'm going to cover two general ways you can go about doing so, which is going to be straightforward looping as well as chopping up your samples. I'm going to go over both of these techniques and the important things that you should know. First, let's play the sample here. This is a sample from a guy named Timmy Holiday. He has a YouTube page where he just posts up all the samples that he makes and they're just much better than the straightforward boring loops that you find on most other people's websites. He almost creates mini songs. I just recently stumbled upon his page. He probably has no idea who I am, but I thought I'd give him a shout out just because I think you guys will like his samples. So his info is in the description box below if you wanna check out his stuff after this video is done. And by the way guys, if you like my videos, please do subscribe. And if you get bored of seeing my videos, it's just one click away to unsubscribe, but it really does help me out, so I would appreciate it. Now in general, when it comes to sampling, whether you're looping or you're chopping, you can break down the process into two separate steps. The first one being preparation. This is the step where you want to get your sample ready before you do anything to it and you start playing around with it. You wanna prepare a few things about the sample. For instance, one thing that you're gonna to wanna to prepare is figuring out which part of the sample you even wanna use. So to do this, what you're gonna do is drag your sample into your playlist. With this sample here, honestly, there's just a lot of good parts I can choose from. So going in, it can be good to have an idea of which part of the sample you wanna to begin to work with. For me, in my opinion, choosing a part of the sample that isn't as cluttered, that doesn't have as much going on with the drums and vocals playing all over the place, is just gonna make your job a little bit easier when you choose to sample. But nonetheless, the choice is ultimately yours. Find a part of the sample that sounds interesting to you and start from there. Since in this example I'm looping, what I'm gonna do is choose a part of the sample that I'm gonna loop around over and over again. So that little section of the sample sounds good to me. I'm gonna choose that to be the loop in my beat. I'm gonna start off by isolating that part of the sample by using the slice feature here. And I'm gonna hold down Alt and Shift to get a more accurate slice. Now I'll do the exact same thing at the tail end here. So there you go, I've isolated my loop now. The second step in the sampling process is manipulation. This is when you start making adjustments to the sample itself to fit your beat. For instance, one thing that you're gonna want to manipulate is the sample speed. This will help you fit your sample to be the same BPM as your beat. Otherwise, this will happen. You guys can hear the speed of the sample is different than the speed of our overall beat. To fix this, you will need to stretch out your sample. To do so, you will select this option right up here. And at that point, you can just go ahead and stretch your sample out. You guys can hear the sample is a little bit slower now and it also got pitched down. And obviously most of the time you're gonna want more control over the pitch of your sample. You might not want it to change or you do want it to change but you wanna have control over what the actual pitch is gonna be. All you're gonna do is double click on the sample, change the mode here, to E3 generic. All of these are just different algorithms that you can choose to stretch out your sample in different ways. Most of the time E3 generic is gonna be your best bet. So now when we hit play, it's back to its original pitch. And like I mentioned, another thing that you might wanna do is play around with the pitch of the loop. And you can easily do that by playing with the pitch knob right here. So if I pitch it up 100 cents or one semitone, you guys can hear it's slightly higher pitch now. And there is no right or wrong way to repitch your sample, just choose something that sounds good to you. Another thing that you might need to manipulate is the timing of the loop, and this is something that's really important. Now, this is a very common problem when it comes to looping. What I did here was I just set down a basic drum pattern, and you guys can hear what's gonna happen. You 
You guys can hear the sample's timing is a little bit off. You can more easily see this visually if I zoom in here. In the playlist here, the drums are perfectly quantized, but the sample itself isn't. So right here is where the snare hits. And in comparison, you guys can see how early this instrument is hitting relatively to my snare. You can even hear it there, it's a little bit early. And this might be something that you run into where even though you loop something perfectly, the rhythm of the instruments within that loop aren't perfectly on time. And the reason why this might happen is because the sample itself contains live instrumentation and the person who's playing the instrument might be slightly off time. They might play some instruments a little bit early, a little bit late. And this is a common problem that you're gonna run into if you try to loop. So let's go ahead and fix it. This can easily be fixed by going ahead and right clicking on the track and you can consolidate it, that's gonna be the first step. So I'm gonna go ahead and press start here. And you guys can see we have a brand new track here and the next step is gonna to be to go ahead into the new track, go into the sample setting up here and selecting time warp sample. And you guys can see right here, we have our loop. Now just a heads up, what's gonna happen if you don't consolidate the track first, for example, if we went back into the original loop that we had here and we tried to do the exact same thing, it's gonna load up the entire sample here and not just that piece that we isolated for our loop. So going back into our actual loop here, New Time is basically a plugin that allows you to stretch out different sections of your sample at different rates so you can more easily control the timing of your loop, which is exactly what we need in this scenario. One common thing that you might run into is it's gonna play in half the speed You guys can easily see what New Time did here was it stretched it over a four bar loop, which is not what we want. So I'm gonna hold down control, select everything, go to the very end here and just compress it back into our two bar loop. And from here, you guys can see if I zoom in, timing of our transients, these instruments playing is somewhat off here. This instrument should be playing on this grid line right here. This one should be playing over here. So what I can do to easily fix this is go into edit, select quantize time. And now it's gonna be perfectly on time. So once you're satisfied with your loop, you can go ahead and go up here and select send to playlist. One thing that I wanna point out, you might end up with a little silent section at the end of your tail in the very last section. And you guys can hear the problem that this is gonna create if I loop it. We get that tiny little pause at the end. Before you export this out to your playlist, you'll wanna take the very last section here and drag it out a tiny bit. And then again, you're gonna to go to send to playlist. And again, at the very end, we have this little tail created that we want to get rid of. So I'm gonna turn off stretch mode here and just go ahead and truncate this loop. And you guys can see the difference between our original loop right up here and the time adjusted loop right down here. So if I hit play, you guys can hear the difference. The timing is perfect now. And one last thing I wanna show you guys, make sure you go into your mixer and turn off new time here. Now this isn't something that you might wanna do every single time. There is something to be said about introducing a little bit of sloppiness into the rhythm of your beat. But if things are too distracting, if things are a little bit way too off grid, using new time can really help you solve this issue. So now that this loop is sounding on time, I can go ahead and make a beat out of this. At this point, I can go ahead and use Wave Candy to figure out all the notes in my loop here. <laughs> This is a really powerful tool in FL Studio, so if you guys want a full tutorial on how to use this thing, it's right above my head. And using this information, I can easily go ahead and come up with my 808 pattern now. And now it's off to the races. I can go ahead and make a full beat out of this. So that was a more loop focused type of sampling style that I just showed you guys. Another method of sampling is to chop up your sample. And the two step process would be the exact same here. First, we're gonna prepare the sample and then we're gonna manipulate the sample. First thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is use a sampler in the preparation phase. This is gonna let you prepare your sample in a lot of different ways, a lot easier if you wanna go down the route of chopping up your samples. In FL Studio, we have Slice X, which is a stock sampler that comes with FL Studio, which is a little bit more elaborate than the alternative. 
If you prefer to use Slice X, I did a full video on the most important things that you should know if you want to use it. So that's right above my head if you're interested. The other option that comes with FL Studio is Fruity Slicer. This is far more of a basic sampler. It's a lot more minimal and it has a lot less features. This is something that I like to use whenever I have very basic sampling needs, like if I have a drum loop, for instance. The one that I like to use is Momentum, which is a free third-party sampler. I just enjoy using this much more than the ones that come with FL Studio. Fundamentally, these all do the exact same thing, but Momentum allows you to do some extra stuff a little bit easier, which is the reason why I prefer to use it. And again, step one is preparation. Before with the looping method, this was a little bit easier where we only had to select one section of the sample that we wanted to use and we could go ahead from there. Here it's gonna be slightly more complicated because fundamentally what we're gonna be doing is choosing multiple parts of the sample that we want to use and we're gonna create chops there. And then we're gonna to try to rearrange those chops into something that makes sense musically. And there are a lot of different chopping methods, different techniques when it comes to sampling and chopping up your samples. I did a video a little while back on some more advanced sampling techniques right above my head. But here it's sort of hard to give advice on the things that you should do because fundamentally this is where the creative part comes in when it comes to sampling. For me personally, like I mentioned, I do prefer to use parts of the sample that are a little bit more open, a little bit less dense because they allow for manipulation a little bit more easily generally speaking. Sometimes I'll leave the chops as they are after the auto chopping as well. I'll try to discover some type of arrangement within here and experiment with the different chops here and I won't even bother moving the chops around. And other times I'll be very deliberate with my chops and I'll move them to a very specific part of the sample if I have an idea in mind. In my opinion, sampling is a skill on its own and for me to sit here and say this is something that you should do every single time you sample, would be leading you guys down the wrong path. I feel that it's important to experiment and try out different methods, different styles of sampling, so you can learn different ways of sampling and ultimately make better beats. I think one universal statement that's true when it comes to sampling and chopping is make sure you come up with something that makes sense musically when you're chopping up your sample. Nonetheless, when you're done preparing your chops like I am here, At this point, you can move on to manipulation. So again, I can stretch out the sample if I wanted to. I can also play around with the pitch. You guys can hear, since I pitched down the sample a lot, something happened with my loop that I came up with. just a lot more low end tones, which is something that I don't necessarily want, especially since I plan on coming up with my own bass line, especially with these two notes here. So I can manipulate the sample by using some effects to clean it up. So here I'm going to use an EQ to get really restrictive with the frequencies that this sound takes up. Overall, a lot of the times when you sample, it's going to essentially become a game of problem solving. When you stretch out a sample, when you play around with its timing, when you play around with its pitch, and you manipulate it in a bunch of different ways, problems are going to arise. You might end up with gaps in between your chops because the timing of your sample has changed. You might end up with some new unwanted frequencies in your sample after you pitch shift it like we had here. There's just a lot of things that can happen and go wrong. So you have to understand and use your tools to fix those problems. That's going to be something that's key whenever you're sampling. So those are two different ways you can go about sampling. Again, there are just a ton of ways you can go about doing so. I did a video a while back on some advanced techniques that you might want to see if you're interested in sampling and learning how to do so better. So if you feel like this is some pretty straightforward stuff, that video might be better for you and it should be appearing on the screen right now. If you guys have enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. My free drum kit's available in the description box below as well as a link to the Discord if you want your beats reviewed live. I do that every two weeks and I'll see you guys next time.